Welcome to our video on configuring Windows Server 2008 Active Directory. This is part 4 of creating and maintaining Active Directory objects, which is about 17% of the 640 exam. We're going to be talking about group policy objects, computer policies, user policies, group policy processing order, security settings, and preferences. The main goal of the network administrator is to achieve centralized security and centralized administration. Um, when it comes to centralized administration, we're really talking about group policy. And over the years, I've come up with the definition that you see here in the first bullet. Group policy objects make changes to the computer based on the identity of the user, the computer, or both. And these changes are the same changes that we would make if we were sitting at the computer. It could be anything from saying that a particular software is not allowed to be installed all the way up to you know who's allowed to change the system time. Any type of a setting in the computer, we're going to make it from a central location. And how does the computer know whether to make that change? Well, it's based on either the identity of the user or of the computer or both. And when we say the identity, it really means where that user or that computer account is located within the Active Directory hierarchy. And of course the goal is centralized management. Now before I actually get into the slides I want to take you in and just kind of show you a little bit with group policy. And so I'm going to click on Start, Administrative Tools, and we want Group Policy Management. And this is our Group Policy Management console. We're actually going to be going through this in a number of different videos because we actually have several on group policy but I want to go through and I'm just going to pick the default domain policy I want to right click that and hit edit so that we can see so here's an example of a policy and you can see that it's broken down into two halves a computer configuration half and a user configuration half and so you want to keep that in mind as we go through the next couple of slides now the computer policies which would be that computer half of the policy are processed by computers with accounts that are in the scope of the GPO. And we're going to take a look at that. The important thing is that they're all processed when the computer boots. And so all of the policies that are going to be applied to that computer half are all processed before you even get the hit control alt delete to log on. The user policies, which are the user half of that policy we just looked at, are processed by the computers when a user with an account within the scope of the GPO logs on. And so this is kind of important that they're processed when the user logs on. Now there are very few policies that actually overlap between the computer side and the user side. Policies that affect the computer level affect the entire computer regardless of which user is logged on. Whereas policies that are on the user side are really specific to that user profile. So there shouldn't be much of a conflict between them. But whenever there are policies that have a conflict, it's like a light switch. You know, whoever flips the switch last wins. So if I walk into a room and turn it on, my wife comes in and turns it off, I turn it on, she turns it off, whoever flips that switch last, that's the status of the light. It's either on or it's off. Okay. So the fact that the user policies run when the user logs on means that in the unlikely event there is a, a discrepancy between what the computer has been told and what the user has been told, the user side is going to take precedence because that runs after log on. Now policies can be applied at different levels within Active Directory and this is the order in which they're applied. We can have local policies at the computer itself. So let's say we have a Windows 7 client, it has a local policy. With Windows 7 you can actually have multiple local policies, which was new with that operating system. Um, but you certainly have policies at the local level, they run first. Well, that means that in the order of precedence, they're, they've got the last priority because there's a very good chance that if there are any settings in there, it may be overridden by later policies. The second level that runs are any policies set on the site. And you'll notice, with the exception of the local computer, they start with the broadest and they work on down. And so as you're designing your policies, you want to put very general policies up at the site and the domain and very specific policies at the OU. Sites, again, hopefully you watched the videos that had to do with sites. These are our geographic locations. So I can apply a policy that's only going to affect a particular site 
that's going to run first. Then I have policies that affect the entire domain, regardless of what site the person is logging into. And sites, you may or may not remember, are domain independent. Um, so you can actually have multiple domains within one site. So I either hit them geographically or I get the entire domain and then I start to narrow down my focus and get very much more specific. So the last level of policies that run are on the OU or the OUs themselves. And that's the order it's going to go. Local, site, domain, OU. And you definitely want to have that memorized. Um, that's something that you, you really should know. So let's take a look at an example. Let's suppose a user named Harrison Ford, who's in the manager's OU, in the Contoso.com domain, logs into a computer named Client1 in the Teller's OU in the Contoso.com domain, and that this is taking place in the New York site. So the first thing that happens when Client1 boots is that the computer half of any policy set on the New York site is going to be processed. Then the computer half of any policy set at the domain will be processed. And then finally, any, the computer half of any policy set at the teller's OU will be processed. And then the computer will come up to hit Control alt delete to log on. So Harrison Ford logs onto the computer. And then the next thing that's going to happen is the user part of any policy set on the site will run. The user half of any policy set on the domain will run. And then the user half of any policy set on managers will run. And then it will actually get his desktop. Now notice here, if there are computer policies on managers, it doesn't run because the computer account is not in managers, only the user account. Correspondingly, if there are any user policies on tellers, those won't be processed either because Harrison Ford's account is a user inside the manager's OU. So you want to kind of think through it a little bit when these things happen. Again, you shouldn't really be designing an Active Directory infrastructure where you know, something gets turned on at the domain, something gets turned off at the OU. There shouldn't be that many conflicts to really have to sort out. On the other hand, the reason the system is tiered is because you may want to have policies that contradict each other. For example, suppose I have a domain policy that says no USB drives are allowed in the computers. But Harrison Ford, let's say in this case he was an IT person instead of, you know, just an end user. Well, I may want to have a policy on IT that reverses that. It says anybody whose user account is in an IT OU can use USB drives because that's part of their job. So there are situations where you do want policies that conflict, but it shouldn't be the norm. The norm really is that we're trying to build a complete picture. So we're putting anything that's tied to a geographic location out as a policy on the site. Anything that we want to have be a widespread rule in our domain will be set up at the domain level. And then as we begin to set security for individual users and computers, we'll do that at an OU level.